Hi, my name's Annette, and my passion in life is to help people just like you find the energy to do the things that they love to do, have a healthier life, and spend more time with their friends and family, or travel if that's what you're into. So today, I want to talk about uh, step two of the ketogenic diet. So last video, we talked about what the ketogenic diet is and why you would want to do it and what the benefits were. This time I want to talk about keto misconceptions and setbacks and things that might cause you issues while you're trying to do a keto lifestyle. Most of the people are only going to tell you the pretty stuff. So let's lock in here and see what we can find out. So when you begin a ketogenic lifestyle, if you're not using something like an exogenous ketone to help keep your body in a state of ketosis, you will get the keto flu. The level of keto flu that you get, I'm not going to be sure to know. It depends on your health level. It depends on how easily your body converts to a state of ketosis, which if you remember, a state of ketosis is just when it's when your body is using fat to make ketones, which happens in the liver, unless you're drinking them. Um, so if you're not doing that properly, you're going to suffer. And um, the only way to really get through that is drink lots of water, have your uh, minerals. Everybody doing a ketogenic, should, ketogenic diet should be using a mineral supplement because you're going to be losing your electrolytes because you urinate a lot and your body tends to dump fluids when you do that. So you want to make sure that you're getting plenty of fluid and getting your electrolytes in. Secondly, if you're struggling with um, getting into a state of ketosis or if you're just not seeing the results that you'd like to see, here's some things that you need to remember. You could be eating too much protein. A ketogenic diet is not a free lease on life to just go eat all the hot wings and bacon that you can eat. You still have to be in a calorie deficit if you're going to lose weight, which is why I always tell people to keep their carbs under 20 grams if they're trying to drop a few pounds, but also you have to remember to keep your calories lower so that your body will resort to burning its own fat. Especially if you're going to drink a ketone supplement, if you're eating a lot of calories still, you're getting the benefits of having ketones in your body, but you're not really burning off any of your own fat. So you have to make sure and balance that out. So make sure that when you're eating protein, that you're digesting it properly. Sometimes people need to take enzymes to help break down the protein and the fats because you're eating more fat and a moderate level of protein. And you should probably eat between three and six ounces of protein at a time, maybe once or twice a day. You don't need as much protein as everybody thinks unless you're bodybuilding or something like that where you need additional protein. Sometimes those people will need a little extra protein but you wanna make sure that it's digestible and it's good protein and it's healthy protein, grass fed, and you know you can use the fattier cuts of meat like ribeye and ground beef and salmon and chicken thighs and leave the skin on and all of that good stuff. Um, if you eat too little fat, you could also be jeopardizing your state of ketosis. You wanna make sure that you're getting enough fat in your diet to help keep you there. So you gotta find ways to work in extra fat. That means having guacamole, eating eggs, you can have bacon occasionally, like I said, ribeyes, fatty meats. Um, I do like to have chicken wings occasionally. You want to avoid things like vegetable oils and processed foods that have hydrogenated oils. I know most people are, are aware of trans fats and they're learning to avoid those. So. That's still true. You wanna make sure that you're avoiding those trans fats. But you can have saturated fat. Saturated fats are the fats that are in butter, that are in red meat. Coconut oil is a saturated fat. Eggs, those things have saturated fats in them. And saturated fats are not your enemy, even though that's what you know media has been saying for the last 50 years. Um, you just really want to make sure that you're getting good healthy fats into your body and I try to add some fat to every single meal. If I'm eating a salad, I use a high fat dressing. If I'm eating a steak, I typically add some garlic butter to it. Uh, you can also have low carb mayonnaise, things like that. Add coconut oil to your coffee or tea. Add MCT oil to your daily regimen. Those are all ways to get healthy fats into your diet. 
and you wanna make sure you're doing that with every single meal. And even in between meals, a lot of people talk about fat bombs. I love fat bombs. I make a chocolate peanut butter fat bomb. As a matter of fact, I have a YouTube video of how to do that. You're welcome to go check that out if you'd like. It's just a quick video on how I make my favorite fat bombs. There's tons of recipes out there for fat bombs though, so don't feel like you have to do the one I do because I love it. You might not love it. Uh, and like I said again, make sure that you're keeping those carbs counted. You have to count your carbs. You can't just eat and assume that you're in a state of ketosis and that you're gonna be losing weight. Like I said, you also wanna make sure you're getting enough electrolytes. You need calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, all of those things. I know there's been a lot of press that sodium is bad for you, but table salt makes your body retain water as well sea salt like pink Himalayan or Celtic salt are actually healthy for you because they have other minerals that help your body absorb the sodium and it's utilized by your body. So stay away from table salt and use dirty looking sea salt. If it looks dirty, it's got other minerals in it and it's gonna be better for you. Make sure you're drinking your water. You need to drink half your body weight in ounces every single day, up to 100 ounces a day. So if you weigh 200 pounds, 100 ounces is gonna be your limit. If you weigh more than that, then 100 ounces is still gonna be your limit for the day. But try to get that water in because it's gonna help flush toxins and things out of your body, which is another reason why you wanna make sure you're getting those minerals in. So don't just assume that if you're eating fats, you're gonna lose weight. Like I said, you have to make sure that your calories are lower than what you're, than what you're burning off every day in order to do that. Uh, you gotta be committed. You gotta make sure that you're keeping track of those things. You can't really do lazy keto and have a lot of benefits out of it if you're letting those things slip in and derail your success. Now you do want to eat healthy vegetables and occasionally some berries. Uh, you want to have spinach and kale and you can have Brussels sprouts, broccoli, um, cauliflower. As a matter of fact, I'll put a list of healthy foods, you throw a link below that you can click on to get a list of foods and the macros that are in them which are healthier for you. And the macros actually are just protein, fat, and carbs. It just breaks it down for you so that you know what you're doing. And if you're measuring that or keeping track of that, you'll have that information for your meal plan or your chart. So now that we're talking about being in a state of ketosis and some of the setbacks of being in ketosis, a lot of people need to track whether they're in ketosis or not. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. There's breath testing, there's urine testing, and there's blood testing. Blood testing can be a little expensive and it's not all that common for people that are just playing around with a keto lifestyle, but people that are really serious often will spring for a blood ketone meter. I don't typically measure my ketones on a regular basis, but occasionally I do get curious and I will measure them. The most inexpensive way to measure ketones, and this is using urine, whenever you have excess ketones in your body, they do come out in your urine and they can be tested on a strip. So a lot of people use that to test to see if they're in a state of ketosis. The only problem with that is if your body's using up all the ketones and you're not in a high level of ketosis, it may not show up on the strip. Although that can make you try a little harder and work a little harder. And I do find that a lot of times as people go farther and farther and farther into a ketogenic lifestyle, the urine straps don't work as well as they go farther and farther in because their body just utilizes the ketones better. So those are uh, some things to keep in mind. And since I have you and we're talking about setbacks, we'll talk just shortly about the keto flu. A lot of people are really worried about the keto flu and anybody who's ever been on any kind of a diet, I don't care what kind of diet it was, if you were keeping yourself from eating, if you were doing the cabbage diet or the water diet or whatever it was that you were doing, if you've gone without eating carbohydrates or gone for fasting where you've not eaten for periods of time, you've probably felt a little bit of what everybody calls the keto flu. You're dealing with maybe some headaches, a little bit of brain fog, dizziness, maybe you're a little shaky, you might be agitated, or what they say on uh, candy bar commercials, that you're hangry. Um, 
muscle weakness, you might be tired. Those things are all signs that your body is in between burning carbohydrates for energy and burning fat for energy. And it's it just doesn't have enough energy to function. So you're tired, you're run down, you're worn out, you feel yucky. A lot of people call that the keto flu. Basically, it's just the fact that your body doesn't have enough energy to run on and you're in between sugar and fat. So like I said, there's a great way to avoid that period is to drink some exogenous ketones. Another way would be to just make sure you have lots and lots of electrolytes, make sure you're drinking lots of water, and sometimes you just have to tough it out. But it's difficult and it's not fun. And that's the reason why most people never get to the end of their diet. Like they'll plan a diet, they'll start a diet, and by the time they get you know, a week in, they're so exhausted and cranky and they crave food so badly that they just give in. And the problem with the period between using sugar for fuel and using fat for fuel is if you cheat even just a tiny, tiny little bit, you have to start all over again which means that keto flu can go on for quite some time. And of course your brain is telling you, I need sugar, I need sugar, I need sugar. So the first thing you reach for when you do decide to cheat is something that's gonna shut your brain up. It's gonna shut off that response that is saying, I need fuel, I need fuel, I need fuel. Instead of holding out and waiting for the fat to start turning into ketones, you end up cheating and having some type of carbohydrate, which satisfies the brain, satisfies the body for a short period of time, and then you go right back into that keto flu response, and it makes it very hard to get into a state of ketosis, which is why I personally prefer to use an exogenous ketone product to get me there. If you'd like to know the product I use, I'm happy to share it with you. Just ask. I'll be sure and tell you what it is. So the keto flu, you know, drink your water, make sure you're getting your electrolytes, eat some vegetables. Fat is very satiating, so if you find that you're hungry, eating some fat will actually make you feel better. And you can use like MCT oil and things like that to help get through that tough period. So hopefully this has been extremely helpful for you. Thank you very much for watching. If you would, please hit subscribe below, or if you're watching this on Facebook, hit notify me when I go live. I'd love to have you uh, follow me so that you can see the new stuff that I'm coming out with. If you'd like to join my Facebook group, I'll put a link below. In my Facebook group, we talk about ketones and meal plans, and we have lots of recipes. It's a community where people talk about things that have to do with ketosis. We have a lot of fun, sometimes we have jokes and recipes and we just really have a good time in the community. You're welcome to join the community if you'd like. Also, if uh, you're interested, I'm doing a 30-day boot camp coming up soon. If you'd like to know more about that, we'll talk about that in the group. So make sure you join my Facebook group. And I won't forget, I'll add the link to my food list with the macros on it so that you can get that information as well. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Dr. Annette, and I love to help people just like you feel better and have the energy to do the things they love to do. Thanks for watching.